Alright, what is going on guys? It's me, Andrew here, and welcome to episode number three of Andy Explains. This is a show where I talk about computer components, language, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So, uh, yeah, if you want to subscribe uh, to stay notified on when I post one of these new videos, you guys can go ahead and do so. But in this video, we're going to be talking about RAM and taking a look at RAM and what it does. So right now in my hand, I'm holding a memory module. That is the uh, correct term for uh, RAM. It's called the memory module, the actual stick itself. Um, what RAM, RAM stands for Random Access Memory. And um, what RAM pretty much is is that um, it's short-term memory. Uh, so, like say before, you actually, like th think of it as a, as a human, in a human perspective, okay? Um, when you want to remember something, you first store it in your short-term memory you process it and then afterwards it goes back into your long-term memory okay so um, RAM is volatile meaning that as soon as uh, you hit the power button on your computer everything that is loaded into RAM at the moment erases and shuts off and you can never retrieve it again unless you've saved it into um, long-term memory which is pretty much your storage or your hard drive so there's a difference between memory and this is the un, um, storage so storage and memory are not the same thing they're completely different so when do not ever use those words interchangeably so don't ever go to the store or a tag director new egg or whatever store that you get your computer components from and ask them um, to buy some memory they will just give you a memory module and if you ask them to buy storage when you mean a memory module they'll give you hard drive or SSD so never get those two words confused alright so um, there's two different types of RAM uh, there is static RAM and dynamic RAM. I'm pretty sure you've seen this somewhere before. This SRAM and DRAM. Okay, so SRAM is static RAM. It's much faster um, than DRAM. Forgot how much um, the um, access time is. I think it's in nanoseconds. Um, but static RAM, static means that it stays still. It doesn't constantly refresh itself. So uh, it's much faster that the way. But um, static RAM is not um, what you call. It. It's not feasible. It's too expensive. So people tend to use um, DRAM more often. Um, like I said, DRAM is, means dynamic. Dynamic means it's, it's constantly changing or constantly refreshing itself. Um, overall, static RAM is much faster than DRAM, but DRAM is much cheaper, so that's why everybody uses it. Um, so let's think of RAM uh, as in, in, this, in this analogy, okay? Let's say you're at a gym, all right? And... Um, you have a friend, okay, your friend, imagine your friend as the CPU, okay, he's the one that's actually um, using the dumbbells, okay, and you are right beside him as um, pretty much, you, you pass the dumbbells to him, right, as the, um, you're the RAM, all right, and now let's say the rack of the dumbbells, or whatever, the weights that he's using, uh, that you're carrying the um, dumbbells from the rack, it's pretty much the hard drive itself or the long-term memory and um, the weights or the dumbbells are the the information okay so let me refresh it. your friend is the CPU you're the RAM the rack is the hard drive and the dumbbells or the weights that uh, you're pretty much passing on to your friend is the information All right. so you guys get the sense so when uh, your friend requests a a dumbbell or a certain dumbbell let's say he asked for 55 pounds okay you being the ram have to go into onto the rack grab those um weights or the the yeah the dumbbells and then pass it on to him so that he can do his workout when he's done and if he wants to like pretty much bring it back to the rack sends it back to you you put it back onto the onto the rack yeah you get, you get the analogy right so think of it that way so to put this in layman's terms, what RAM does is that it pretty much holds um, information waiting to be processed by the CPU. So when you want to, say you request um, a program, okay, uh, like Photoshop, okay, so you double click on your, iPod, on your icon on your desktop, wherever you save your icon, um, and Photoshop starts loading, okay. During that loading process, what it's doing is that it's pretty much taking... Um, the appropriate files from your hard drive. So that's why it's called random. It randomly searches through your hard drive, grabs the appropriate files, and pretty much stores it into um, into the memory that is on the memory module, okay? And when your CPU is ready to process that information, um, it sends it along to the CPU. The CPU processes it, and um, 
if you want to save, like let's say a certain file, let's like, say you're working on a Photoshop, like a PSD file, if you want to save that file, your CPU will send that back to the RAM, your RAM will put it back onto the hard drive. It's simple, simple as that. All right, so um, now of course, if you're going out to buy a RAM, you've heard about this um, standard or DDR, 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 DDR2, DDR3, um, and I think DDR4 will come out soon sometimes, like in the future, but um, what those are is pretty much their standards, okay? Like with every um, computer c component, there is a certain standard, um, let's say SATA 1, SATA 2, SATA 3, and a whole bunch of stuff like that, but I'm not going to get into the, that pretty much is the hard drive stuff and I'll talk about that in another video. Um, so I think what DDR stands for stands for um, dual dynamic RAM and I'm not sure if that's 100% correct and if I'm wrong I'll put a little pretty much a little um, call out on the screen right now to correct myself but I think it stands for dual dynamic RAM. Alright so another reason why you might be watching this video is because um, you want to know about what this um, dual channel um, mode or single channel is so the difference between single channel and dual channel is that okay when you um, when you pretty much uh, let's say use your RAM in single channel mode the memory module is acting by itself and it's pretty much its own singularity um, it's its own it's acting as its own single single device okay but when you use it in um, dual channel mode okay uh, it takes both of these slots, these, these memory modules, and pretty much acts as if they're one big, um, one slot. And the reason why it does is that, or how you pretty much configure it is that, I'll put a little picture on the screen right now because it's a little confusing to explain. Okay, so if you look on your motherboard right now, um, usually people have uh, motherboards that have three, no, what am I saying, four DIMM slots, and um, each of those four is pretty much color-coded, so there's pretty much two colors. Um, Mine is blue and um, I think it's black. So you'd pretty much have the first slot color coded blue, and then the second slot black, then the third slot blue, and then the fourth slot black. So the blue slots, which is the first and the third, are one channel, and the the first channel and the second, which is the blue um, second channel, which is the second slot, and the third fourth slot are um, another channel. So this is one channel and this is another channel, okay? So if I wanted to use um, my memory modules in dual channel mode, they have to be identical, okay? I would have to put um, pretty much uh, one slot in one um, module in um, the first slot on channel one and um, another module in the second slot. So it's pretty much like that. So uh, um, that is pretty much easy in dual channel. But if I was to use it in single channel mode, um, I would have to put um, pretty much um, one in the blue slot and uh, another one in the black slot. So this is not a good setup if you wanna uh, use identical RAM. It's much wiser to use it in um, pretty much um, dual channel since it actually uses it pretty much as one um, slot instead of two individual um, modules. So yeah, I'll have a little picture on the screen right now and uh, you guys can see what I mean. It's a little confusing, but it's simple if you think about it. So like your CPU, um, your memory module or RAM also has um, a clock speed and that pretty much tells you how fast it is uh, and it's usually measured in um, hertz, pretty much you can see megahertz, gigahertz and I think right now, um, I'm not sure how fast they are but um, pretty much I've seen crazy speeds, um, I think it's 3000 megahertz, pretty much 3 gigahertz, um, I, think it's made, I think it's a Corsair Dominator um, series but I mean who do these 3000 um, 3000 megahertz or 3 gigahertz um, friggin <laughs> clock speed on your RAM. Um, it's not necessary for a gamer if you're pretty much building a gaming PC. Um, I would recommend having um, 1600 megahertz. You can go higher, but that's pretty much what I recommend having. Um, right now, I am using 1333, and that's the lowest um, you should be able to go, or the lowest you should go. Um, but the reason why I'm using 1333 is because um, I'm using, uh, let's say, I'm using my, I think it's the Vengeance, yeah, I'm using my Vengeance um, RAM, which is pretty much stock at 1600, and um, I'm using a 4 gig um, Kingston RAM, which is stock at 1333. Um, for some weird reason, I can't use my um, my uh, my Corsair Vengeance RAM in um, dual channel at 1600, and um, use the um, pretty much the 
Kingston memory, overclock it to match the uh, the course here. For some reason, I can't do that, um, so I have to pretty much downclock uh, my underclock my uh, my my vengeance memory modules to fit the settings of the um, course Kingston memory. But I don't think you guys care about that. But yeah, that's pretty much the end of this video. Give it a um, thumbs up, comment if you want, and um, yeah, subscribe for when I post another video to get the notification. It's been me, Andrew, here, and I'm reaching a 10-minute mark, so I'll go ahead and end this video right now. So, later, guys.